Hey everybody, Scott Dettweiler here. Today I want to talk about a problem we're all facing if you're using any type of AI art generation tool, and that's that the pictures are small. What we want to do is we want to make them bigger, but we want to do so in a way that doesn't like blur them out. So I've generated this image on Stable Diffusion, which is in closed beta right now, but I'm sure we'll open back up again because it's making leaps and bounds every day. Uh, but it isn't very big. This is the 100% upscale here. And then if I take it to 200, or about 200, 214, you can see it's already starting to gran to granulate, and uh, we have one little problem with the lip, but the fa the faces in this image are fantastic compared to what Midjourney is kicking out today. Again, this stuff is growing every day, but uh, Stable Diffusion's images are fantastic when it comes to faces, for the most part. Anyway, so all I want to do is I want to upscale this using uh, something better than just Photoshop that's just going to take it and look at the neighbors and try and in, in, interpolate or use math to figure out what it looks like. Um, or use, again, Topaz AI, which is a paid tool, which does a fantastic job and works on every kind of image. But what if we can use a generative adversarial network, which is a GAN, which means it's basically it generates an image and then uses another thing called discriminator to say, is this really a picture of that thing? And it learns over time how to fool itself. So if we hand it an image, it can upscale it and decide, is this still a real looking picture? But that would be very tough if it were trained on every type of image. So what we do is we want to find a GAN that is trained specifically on the type of image we were using. So let's say, for example, you draw anime. Uh, you would not use that uh, GAN to try and improve this image because it's a completely different art style. Or if you shoot landscapes and you had a GAN that worked on anime, again, it would be a sad story. So what we want to try and find something that would work on specifically what we're working on, hopefully. And luckily there are a ton of them and they're for free. I'll put a link to this down below, but this website here, which is the uh, upscale to wiki, uh, has all of these GANs available for you. So you can just go and grab the one that you need. And we see we have ones for uh, anime, again, manga, cartoons, uh, hail removal, banding, blurring, uh, fabrics. And then of course up here, there's realistic photos, which is the one we want. We'll see that there are several different types of them, depending on what it is that you're looking to do. Uh, so some of these uh, can go up to 16 times uh, or four times. Down below, there's even more of these, uh, again, depending on what you're trying to do. But some of them are made specifically for faces. Some of them are made for close-ups. Uh, it really depends on what they're trained for. A really good example of a GAN made for faces working is This Person Does Not Exist. This Person Does Not Exist is a website that will generate a face of a person that does not exist. And it'll do so repeatedly. Uh, so you can just keep refreshing this and it will keep handing you faces that the GAN that's been trained on faces knows that, yeah, this looks like a, a good face to me. I think this is a, this is realistic and would fool my discriminator part of the application. And sure enough, it can. Uh, so this is just so wild that this actually works. And this, again, look at these. These are from 2019. So these GANs have learned a lot over time, but these people don't exist. So by the way, if you're looking to practice retouching, this is a great place to get models for it without having to worry about stepping on someone's copyright toes because these people don't exist. So using the same GAN model, we can say, can we take this image and use a tool like that to upscale it? So you're not just upscaling, you're maybe even adding a little bit of detail or enriching the detail that's there now. And that's awesome. And it's free. So the tool I'm using that is called Chainer. This is free. Again, I'll put a link to it down below. And uh, this is one of the only upsizing tools I found that is still back being uh, actively developed. So this is really great in the fact that this guy is still putting time and trouble into keeping it alive. Uh, and it's a great tool because it not only does like the, you know, click here, upscale this, whatever, but we can actually take our image through processes or create batches to do different things, which is amazingly powerful, especially for something that's free. So what you do is you drag any of these modules down in and we chain them together. Uh, so for example, we're going to use load image, obviously. Uh, so let's go and select our file. I'll go into my mid journey, bunch of stuff here that I've been working on and click open. And you see now we have it. Now, what do we want to do with it? We want to work against one of these GANs. Now it does have some of the generic upsizers in here. If you're just looking for something that will upscale it generically, well, I really don't want to do that. I want to do something fantastic with it. I'm going to use this PyTorch model is the one that I'm going to choose to use. And you can use any of these other ones as well. There are different models here, uh, but uh, this is the one that I've been using and I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, so we're just going to scale the image. We'll just drag that in here and we're just going to connect this to the image. Now we're looking for a model. What is the model? Again, that's the GAN that's specific to the type of image we want to up upload. So we need to use the load model because we got to go get it and we got to connect it in here like this. So click here and I have downloaded three different GANs, an ultra sharp, 
a 16 times GAN that's more of a generic one, and then one that's specific to faces or ladies actually. Uh, but I'm going to use the uh, four times ultra sharp. It is again, a portrait GAN specifically, uh, but I like this one quite a bit. So that's the one I'm going to try and use. So I'm gonna click open. And you're gonna see that it doesn't really do anything because we have to do something with this image. Now there are other options in here. Uh, we can view the image, um, which is fine, but I really don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and save it outright. So let's just use save image. We'll just drag that down here. And again, we'll connect it. And it's saying, well, what do you want the image name to be? Well, I'm just gonna use the original image name here. That's good enough for me. And I'm gonna dump it into a directory. So let's dump it into this directory here. And that's it. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, this is a four times model. So we know that uh, whatever this size is here, it looks like we're gonna be at 2048 pixels when we come out of it here. Now we could actually get a little weirder. We can go and grab something like this to upscale it by a factor. Um, so we could actually add another 400% upsizer in here. But again, this is not using a GAN, it's just simply using nearest neighbors and other methods uh, of pixel manipulation to make it bigger. Uh, so we're not gonna use that, but there are other ways to do this. In fact, we could probably do it again. We could pass this through another image upscaler using the same GAN to do it twice, which would give us um, a tremendously big image. Uh, I'm just gonna go with this because this is good enough for the demo of what we're doing. You get to play with it yourself. So I'm just gonna hit play and let it go. Okay, that was pretty fast. It did it really quickly there. So let's pull this over. This is the image that it generated and I have the original image as well, somewhere, here it is. So it's the original image at 206%. So let's go to the new one and put it up to 206%, 200 ish. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, she needs to see an orthodontist, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with that. The amount of resolution that I can now play with. So if I wanna drag this into Photoshop or play with it, I have more capability. Now I did do one with the 16 times GAN just to kind of show it off. It is 102,000 KB um, and it also had a bit of a color shift. But if we go to 200% on it, um, you can see that it is a much larger image, but it also has it's kind of sacrificed what it's doing because it is not trained specifically in portraits. It's more of a generic upsizer. But still, if you're looking to get something that is larger that you want to work on, uh, then this is a great option for it. But um, I want to stick with the one that is specifically for people or faces, and it seems to do a fantastic job. So again, this has been a fantastic tool that has solved a problem for me of the whole upscaling issue, especially if I'm working with my photography and I'm trying to merge in uh, mid-journey information. Mid-journey will only go maybe 1500 pixels on the long edge, and my A7R4 is almost 10,000 pixels on the long edge. So if I wanna use this as foreground elements um, or something that's sharp, I'm really out of luck. Even upscaling with Topaz has not looked great. This has made a tremendous difference in the ability to take the portraiture I'm working on and to expand it to something that's usable and I'd say just as good as maybe even better than the original small scale one because again it's trained on how to do this and it's using a different type of AI to help our AI which is a great combination of things so let me know what you think in the comments below and if you felt this was helpful again uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on these things and I look forward to seeing you next time everybody take care and stay safe